Okay, so a couple minutes here on monoclonal gammopathies of uncertain significance. For me, a mouthful. <laughs> um, Dr. Rutherford, uh, certified functional medicine practitioner, Dr. Gates. Board certified chiropractic neurologist. And uh, we have a chronic pain practice that uh, a big percentage of our patients are peripheral neuropathy. This is not a topic that you will see very much out there, except 10% of the population of peripheral neuropathy patients uh, that we see have this. Uh, monoclonal gammopathies of uncertain significance. And we could call them whether, GUS if you want. Whether they know whether they know they have it or not, uh -huh. and because frequently they come in here and don't know that they have it. Right. And uh, and so. Um, and 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 Dr. Gage just did the numbers <laughs> prior to us doing this, and maybe as much as one fifteenth of the of the elderly population mm -hmm. probably has this. Yeah. So, but for those has peripheral neuropathy. Has peripheral neuropathy. Has peripheral neuropathy, has has peripheral neuropathy and then one tenth of them has this. Yeah. So you do the numbers. The bottom line is, is maybe there's somebody out there like you who is. Uh, researching this and we thought it might be fun to to give you some some data on, on what you may be dealing with and what you might be looking at. So I'm going to defer to Dr. Gates on that. This was his chosen topic and uh, he's done a lot of research on it. Uh, he's in the process of researching it for a book that um, he's completing and I'm editing. So, so in the good stuff. Yeah, and peripheral neuropathy is a wide field unto itself, as many of you know. Also, many of you know that diabetes causes peripheral neuropathy half the time. Um, and then the other half of the time, there can be upwards of 80 different causes. Because of this, and because we've seen some great results with certain types of neuropathies with certain patients, we'll say it that way, uh, we're putting out a lot of information on peripheral neuropathy. We're actually going to be starting a web page termed neuropathy group, peripheralneuropathygroup.com where we're going to have all of our videos on peripheral neuropathy. You've probably seen some of them on YouTube. And then we'll also have our book once it's completed or chapters of our book. But we say all that to say is that monoclonal gammopathies of uncertain significance are a large diagnostic subset of peripheral neuropathy cases. You're probably saying, what is a monoclonal gammopathy? So in essence, if someone has a certain type of bone cancer, term multiple myeloma, <clears throat> they're, they'll have certain features on their lab test that are consistent with what's termed a monoclonal gammopathy. Other things like Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia will do the same thing, or amyloidosis. And these are medical conditions associated with bone cancer, as I mentioned, uh, associated with blood disorders, things of that nature. However, what we see is that a certain segment of the peripheral neuropathy patient population has these same laboratory findings, but they don't have bone cancer and they don't have a blood disorder. It's just that these same lab findings have now been shown to have immune cells that can attack the nerves down there in the feet. They're termed anti-myelin-associated glycoprotein antibodies. Those are just basically antibodies to the fatty sheath around your nerve. And so if you're watching this video, you probably have seen your neurologist and he ran a lab test that this is one lab test commonly covered by insurance. It's called a serum protein electrophoresis and a serum immunofixation, where they can say, oh, here you have these immune cells, likely they're killing your nerves down there. This is what you got. Similar effect to MS patients. Yeah, it's a very similar mechanism. And then some cases of these have been given heavy duty uh, immune modulating medications. Uh, I think one of them is rifuximab. And some early studies have shown some promising results. However, we're putting in our book, we have, I think, six of these cases now. And just so you know, the studies on rifuximab or rituximab that I read a few years ago, like these were studies of 13 people. So I feel pretty good talking about mm -hmm, our six. Mm -hmm. And we had five out of the six improve considerably. Uh, one did not, but five out of six did. And so that was pretty cool. And in reading about this type of peripheral neuropathy, we're seeing that you have these immune cells. In part, there is a theory because of bad bacteria in the gut. The reference there is by urlings, E-U-R-L-I-N-G-S, if I remember correctly. So it's very interesting to work a lot with patients' diets, 
we work a lot with trying to reculture the gastrointestinal tract. And we saw it case after case where in doing that, our patients with peripheral neuropathy who had monoclonal gamma ophthalmia of a certain significance were seeing improvements. And we do what I just talked about in conjunction with peripheral nerve rehabilitation, where basically we try to excite the nerves so they transmit impulses better, like exciting the biceps muscle. And it would think you would be working with a gut to, to yeah, help peripheral right. neuropathy in something like a monoclonal gammopathy, which those of you watching is probably have or probably know something about or you wouldn't be looking up monoclonal gammopathy. Who would think it would start in a gut? Who would think it would be about small intestinal bacterial overgrowth uh, and, and the types of things that help that diet, um, certain nutrients, so on and so forth, to help something that uh, even, even though it's in the neurological literature is one of the causes of peripheral neuropathy, it's not necessarily promoted as something that can be helped. No, and you know, that we caught that off of one little statement in one of the textbooks we really like, it's called Peripheral Neuropathies in Clinical Practice, put out by the Contemporary Neurology Series. And just as Dr. Rutherford said, if you are diagnosed with a monoclonal gammopathy, and this is no cut on your neurologist, okay, this is no cut, it's just a system, likely you're, you may be given, yeah, you're going to get be given maybe pain medications, you may be put on an immunomodulating medication, and in our experience that is about the extent of it, whereas we don't use medications here in our practice, and we have seen some pretty phenomenal changes in immune system cases by working with the gastrointestinal tract, because that's where 70% of the immune system approximately is located. And so we started seeing these changes in these patients with monoclonal gammopathies. Again, I reference, I believe it's five out of six now. And therefore, I was going back and I was doing some reviewing on this topic, and I said, I saw the sentence where they basically laid out that they think this process is happening because of these bacterial issues in the gut, and I, I got so excited, <laughs> I couldn't fall yeah. asleep. But it's a big deal because and this so, is our like eighty percent of our six patients improved dramatically, yeah, and one didn't, and um, that's pretty good results. That's pretty yeah. good results, and that's kind of what we're, what. Dr. Gates wanted to share with you. Yeah, so that's been our experience. Um, and if you have any more questions, you can go to powerhealthtalk.com. Uh, peripheral neuropathy group.com will be up and running pretty soon. And you can also We're talk to us. We're big on peripheral neuropathy. Yes. We and just happen to treat a lot of it. So. And we love working with patients with peripheral neuropathy. Yes. If we feel, and again, we're not saying we can cure everybody with monoclonals out there, um, but what we are saying is that we properly select our patients and we see who can respond to our treatments and who cannot. And out of those, the five we learned a lot out of the one that, that didn't. Improved. Yes, respond. we did. We learned a we lot off of that done. relative to the other. So, so anyway, that's how it's done. Not, or that's not how it's done, but that's what we have found um, as far as the potential for improvement and. Dr. Gates wanted to share that with you, and uh, if you have any questions specifically relative to that, uh, don't let distance from us or in Reno, Nevada, uh, stop you from asking us questions because we we have um, communicate with people all over the country and, and actually from other countries. So please feel free to to contact us if you have any further questions relative to the specifics of of. of um, that type of a, a case if, if you're experiencing that. Okay. And that's it, and thank you for yeah. watching.